As of the most recent data, approximately 90 to 95 percent of individuals involved in auto enrollment pensions in the UK are invested in the default fund. This high percentage is primarily due to the power of inertia, where most people remain in the default option provided by their pension scheme without actively choosing an alternative investment fund. Now, this is something we've spoken about previously in other videos. The fact that auto enrollment has been this double-edged sword, this gift and curse, if you will, whilst it's been mandated in law that your employer has to pay into your pension on your behalf and you also do the same, what has transpired is that we've seen a huge uptick in people registering in their workplace pension. And that is good. The uptake is, was close to 90% at one point. What we've seen, though, is when people go into their workplace pension, they are automatically put into something called a default fund. And a default fund is one of those things that is built to be cautious, not to take too much risk, but it's supposed to be this primary option you get put into that allows you to just to have your money invested. Now, if you're 15, 20, 25, 30 years to retirement, there is a huge debate as to whether or not the default fund is the right place for you to be. And so because now we know that 90 to 95 percent of people stay within that default fund, one of the biggest mistakes that you're probably making with your pension right now is being in the default fund. But you may be asking, well, Pete, what difference does it make? What other options are there? Well, let me tell you. The cost of remaining in a default fund in terms of the potential lost returns over the course of your career can vary significantly and it depends on what you compare it to. And this is where it's really important to understand how a default fund essentially works and what it's designed to do. Now at its core, a default fund is designed to be low risk, i.e. it's not designed to take high risk and getting your money working as hard as possible for you. It's something that is designed to be pretty safe but gets you invested nonetheless. Now, when you compare that to a high risk fund, which is designed to chase returns to help your money grow as quickly and as fast as possible so you amass the largest amount of money possible during that period of time, the returns are very, very different. Not only that, with a default fund, you're also going to have this lifestyle tapering effect, which is where as you approach retirement, it's going to start to de-risk even further. And now you've got this double whammy. You've got this double whammy of you've lost out on returns during the course of your career whilst you've been in this thing, and it's now de-risking you as you approach retirement. And it's quite difficult to try and quantify this, but I wanna show you the impact of this in numbers. Right, so let's just assume for a minute that you have a pension, you're starting off with 100 grand, right? And let's just say you're in a default fund which returns 4% per annum every single year on average. After 20 years, your 100,000 pounds is gonna to grow to 219,000 112 pounds. Pretty decent, right? But when you compare that to, say, a higher risk fund, which will perform a little bit better, and let's just say it does a return of 6% per annum. After 20 years, your 100,000 pounds is going to grow to 320,714 pounds. Over the course of 20 years, that's a difference of 101,602 pounds, which is significant to say the least. So being in a default fund, it serves its purpose, but it does mean that you potentially lose out on money that could significantly impact your retirement readiness and your retirement journey and ultimately how you retire in the future. And it's interesting because these problems with auto enrollment have been long time acknowledged, right? It is something that we know. It's been great on one hand, but I'm gonna read you an outset from an article. This is from back in 2019. It was done by the IFS, the Institute for Fiscal Studies. And their director, Paul Johnson, said this. He said, third, deciding on a default is only a first step. Nearly all those who default into a pension also end up in the default fund choice. Regulation and arguably education become more, not less important, in the face of dis disengaged customers, especially when they are expected to become engaged at some point later on. This has been known as an issue. And it's really important to, at this juncture in the video to ask you this question. Are you engaged with your workplace pension? Are you engaged with 
how your money is being invested. Because the reality is this, most people aren't. Most people get caught up in the nine to five in family life and just live in life generally, that this is something that they are not engaged with presently. And unfortunately, it means that when you do become engaged, it is likely going to be when you're close to that retirement age and you actually have a reason to be engaged and a tangible interest in it. The unfortunate thing is that you've lost time. And so this is why I make these videos for education because education and awareness is absolutely key. Are you engaged with your pension? Because if you're not, you need to fix that and you need to fix that now. Now, if you've been following me for long enough, you would have heard me talk about the fact that we're not making anywhere near enough in terms of contributions into our pensions to allow us this ability to retire in comfort without being reliant on, say, the state, for example. Now, auto roaming is a great thing. It's forced employers to pay into a pension for their employees and it's mandated by law. And part of that deal is you also have to pay in. So you pay in five, your employer pays in three, that's 8% of your annual salary. But there is an issue. Because that 8% is not going to be enough, if you look at the average wage in the UK, it's £30,000. That's £2,400 per year. If you extrapolate that over 20, 30 years, is it going to give you enough so you're not going to be reliant on the state? There is a huge question mark over this. So the mistake that most people need to create correct is paying more into their pension. And there are a couple of things that I do want to talk about here. First and foremost, can you afford to take your 5% contributions up to say 8%? That, including your employee contribution at three, means 11% going into your pension of your salary every single year. As small as that may seem, when you start to compound this over 20, 25, 30 years, the difference can be absolutely significant. Better yet, if you work for a company, and not all companies do this, but most companies, or at least some companies I should say, will have a matching scheme, where if you do go up to 8%, they will go from 3% to 8%. So that means 16% going into your pension. Now, that contribution from your employer is free money. And so if you are serious about really getting this knocked on the head early and addressing this early, fixing the, this mistake early, it is a no-brainer to ask whether or not your employer matches contributions in your workplace pension. You're not going to know that unless you ask the question, which comes back to the previous point of are you engaged in what your pension is doing in your workplace? So contribute more. That is one of the biggest mistakes people are making right now, not contributing enough. You can fix it. And yes, I know, cost of living crisis, things are difficult, but do the calculation. I don't care if it's 1% more. Pay a little bit extra because that amount will compound over time and you will thank yourself for it in 20, 30 years time. But here's the biggest mistake of all, and that is not paying into your workplace scheme via auto enrollment in the first place. I cannot tell you how much of an own goal that is. It's free money. And if you're not paying into your pension, you're not engaged with pensions, with auto enrollment, with how you're going to make provisions for yourself in the future, bearing in mind all of this noise that we're hearing about the state pension age being pushed back to 71. I mean, who wants to wait until 71 to retire if they haven't made provisions of their own? I mean, I don't, do you? I'm sure you're gonna tell me in the comment section. But if you're not paying into your pension, you're cheating yourself. And I don't really know how else to say it. That's the biggest mistake that you need to fix the others come after. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below as always. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and also smash the like button so other people will also get to see this video as well. Till the next one, catch you later.